In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to find the domain when sine and cosine are in the same functions. The first question reads, find the domain of the function f at x is equal to 1 over sine x minus 1 plus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared x. To give a visual of what sine looks like, I've included this wave function of sine. And we'll separate this function into two terms. We have this first term and we have the second term. And we know no number can be divided by 0. So in our case, sine x minus 1 cannot equal to 0. So let's solve for sine x. Let's move this negative 1 over. If we do that, we end up with positive 1. And this statement right now is technically asking us, when is sine x equal to 1? If you take a look at your wave function, sine x is equal to 1 when you have pi over 2. So x cannot equal to pi over 2. Now given that sine x is a continuous function, we know that this will happen again. And it will happen in 2 pi. It will happen if you add 4 pi to it, if you add 6 pi to it. So in other words, x cannot equal to negative 3 pi over 2, as suggested here. It cannot equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi, etc. What we have to do is create a formula that will model this pattern. And the way to do this is to take pi over 2 plus 2n pi. Now why does this work? Well, any value that you put into n, any integer, will give us an x where the y becomes 1. Think about it. If you put a 0 into this n, you end up with pi over 2. If you put a negative 1 into this n, you end up with negative 3 pi over 2. So x cannot equal to this. In our next term, this one right here, we know that you cannot have anything less than 0 as a radicand representing this. So 1 minus cosine squared x must be greater or equal to 0. So we will solve for x here. I'm going to bring this 1 over. And this becomes negative 1 cosine squared x. Also, keep in mind that there is a negative in front of that cosine. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And by dividing a negative, it changes the inequality to the opposite direction. And on the right side, you end up with 1 because negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. Cosine squared x. And I'm going to square root both sides. And this gives us cosine x must be less than or equal to 1. Now you have to ask yourself, when is cosine x equal to 1? Now it is equal to 1, if you recall, the graph of cosine, it looks like this, where it starts off at 1, makes its way to negative 1, and then restarts back at 1. Now what's interesting about what you see here, and I'm going to increase the space here, is that if you look at the graph of a cosine curve, any x value that you choose along this continuous function will give you a y value that is 1 or less. So this inequality is satisfied for all x values. There are no restrictions. No restrictions. That being said, we're going to combine what we found in the first term and the second term. So therefore, your domain includes all x values such that x cannot equal to pi over 2 plus 2n pi, where x belongs to all real values. And that's the answer for the first question. Let's move on to part two. In this question, we are asked to find the domain of this function. f at x is equal to 1 over cosine x minus 1 minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared x. So we're going to start off with this term right here. And remember, this cannot equal to 0. So cosine x minus 1 cannot equal to 0. I'm going to solve for cosine x. Cosine x cannot equal to positive 1. And if you recall, cosine goes from 1 to negative 1 all the way to 1. So therefore, x cannot equal to 0 plus 2n pi, where n represents any integer. Next, we'll concentrate on this part where 1 minus sine squared x must be greater or equal to 0. 
I'm going to bring this one over, and I end up with negative 1 minus sine squared x on the left side. And if you divide both sides by a negative during an inequality, it changes that sign. And you have 1 on the right side, sine squared x on the left. I'm going to square root both sides, and this gives me sine x must be less than or equal to 1. Now remember the sine function looks like this, and it hovers between positive 1 and negative 1. And so therefore, there are no restrictions. No restrictions. And to write this down in a formal way, domain includes x such that x cannot equal to 2 and pi for all real x values. And so there you have it. Two examples on how to find the domain of a function that includes both sine and cosine. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, visit our website at studyforce.com. We're an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.